Okay, here we go with our first try here at using QuickTime to record a lesson. I apologize for the Smart Notebook basic version watermark here. Um, that, unfortunately, unless I'm connected to a computer, stays there. Um, so we'll just have to deal with that. I'll try and scroll up so that it's not as uh, intrusive. So, okay, so 16.1. Remember, this uh, is something for you to pause, rewind, do whatever you want to do. I really would like you to try and do the problems when we get to the practice problems and such, you know, on your own. That's the best way to learn rather than just watching me kind of go through it. But that's there too. So, all right, so polygons. Ooh, and unfortunately, I don't have my polygon shirt to show you, but I think I've, you guys have seen that before. But anyway, so polygons are segments that only intersect at endpoints, okay? And no two segments with a common endpoint are collinear. Okay, so you can see here that the red dots represent the endpoints, and so in other words, we would never have another red dot right here, because that would mean that we have two segments with a common endpoint that are collinear. Can't have that. Okay, uh, you're very familiar with classification of polynomials by sides. What is a three-sided polynomial called? Yes, it's a triangle. Four-sided, bam, quadrilateral. Five-sided, pentagon, like that thing in Washington, DC. Six sides, hexagon. And eight sides, stop sign. It's an octagon. 10 sides is a decagon. 12 sides, a dodecagon. 15 sides, think about what, think, look at five, look at 10. What do you think it's gonna be? Yes, it's a pentadecagon. And if we have n number of sides, meaning we don't know the number, we call it a and gone. Okay. Um, all right. Convex versus concave. Remember when we did this way back when, and basically we said that you couldn't have two points um, that are connected by a segment that leave the set. If it does, then it's called concave. If it doesn't, then it's convex. Well, we're going to kind of do this another way that involves polygons. And basically, it says here, another way a polygon is convex is if no two points lie on opposite sides of a line containing a side, okay? So you can't have points in your polygon that lie on opposite sides of a line that contains a side. And that has to work for every line that contains a side in the polygon. So let's take a look at this and let's figure out whether they're these figures are polygons, and if so, are they convex? So answer here, is this a polygon? Answer is yes. Okay, is this convex? Answer would be no, and here's why. I'm gonna try and draw this in. Uh, let's do a dash colored line. So let's say I drew the line that contains this side right here, okay? So here's the line that contains that side. Are there points that are on both sides of the polygon? Yeah, there is right there and all these points over here. So that would mean that it is concave. In other words, not convex. Okay, moving on to this one. Polygon, yes. Convex, yes, because no matter what line I draw, the rest of the polygon will be on just one side of the line. If I draw this line in right here, it's all over here. If I drew this one here, it's all over here. Okay, uh, let's move down to this one. Polygon, yes, convex, no, it's concave. Think about it. If we drew or we put in this line, 
on this. I can't read that. Yeah. Well, you, you get the picture. We have points over here, points over here. Okay, what about this one over here? The answer would be, notice we have an endpoint there, right? So we have an answer of no. And here, and the reason being that we have two segments, this segment right here, this segment right here, that are collinear. Uh, answer this one, no, because um, we have segments that cross. They don't meet at endpoints. Okay. All right, just a little bit more chapter 16. Uh, 16 one, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon with n sides is the quantity n minus two times 180. So think about that. Think about a triangle per se. That's pretty much the easiest one. We know that the sum of the measures in a triangle is 180 degrees. Well, if we plug in three for n, don't we go three minus two, which is one times 180 is 180. Um, think about if we had a quadrilateral. If you draw one diagonal in a quadrilateral, how many triangles does it create? Two. So therefore, um, you would have four minus two, which is two times 180 is 360. So the sum of the measures in a quadrilateral is 360. Okay, so try and figure out how many sides there are if the sum of the interior angles is 900. What would you do in that case? Well, once you set up n minus 2, the quantity n minus 2 times 180 is equal to 900, and then solve for n. Yes, you sure would. And what did you get? Seven. Terrific. Okay, and then the last part of section 16.1, uh, the sum of the exterior angles of a, poly of a convex polygon, and that's one at each vertex, is 360 degrees. So what we're talking about is if we extended a line right here, basically that contains that side. What we're talking about is that this angle, and then if I did one of these lines off of each of the sides, the sum of all of those angles, exterior angles, would add up to 360. Um, if you think of the easiest um, kind of shape here, let's do a triangle. Let's try and make it equilateral. That looks pretty good. Think about it, if these were all 60 degree angles, then what would this angle be? This angle would be 120, right? And if I did all three, did three of them, I can do that actually. So let's do that. So, um, let me draw, whoops, draw one more in here. So we're not adding up this, 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 and this, we're taking one for each of the angles of the polygon. So we would be doing um, this angle and this angle and this angle. And I just randomly chose one of the two for each of the angles. If you add that up, plus that up, plus that up, well, if this is 60 in here, then this is obviously 120. Same with this one, same with this one. What does that up to? 360. Think about if you had a square. Um, or a rectangle. Let's, uh, let's just put one of those up here. These are all 90 degree angles. What would the exterior angle be here? 90. Here, 90. 90, 90. Those add up to 360. So there you have it. Okay. Um, why don't we go ahead, if, and again, for the first day you only had to get through 16.1. I'm going to go ahead and continue talking uh, and going through 16.2. But this would be a good place, obviously, for you to stop. Um, but let's go ahead now and continue on with 16.2. Okay, 16.2. Uh, so definition, a regular polygon is a convex polygon with congruent sides and congruent angles. So with respect to triangles, it would be an equilateral triangle. With respect to a quadrilateral, it would be a what? Yeah, a square, not a, just a rhombus not just a rectangle,
but it would be a square because it has congruent sides and congruent angles. Okay, a regular polygon has, uh, let me get rid of this. A regular polygon has circles that can be circumscribed and inscribed, okay? So obviously in red here on the left, the radius, this is a circle that's circumscribed, right? So the radius of the circumscribed circle is what we call the radius of the polygon, okay? Radius of the polygon would just mean it's the same as the radius of the circumscribed circle around that polygon. Okay, the radius of the inscribed circle here in blue is called the apothem um, of the polygon. Okay, so you have the radius of the polygon, you have what we call the apothem. Okay, all right, so it says here, draw two radii and form the central angle of the regular polygon. Okay, so in other words here, if you look at this pentagon, this would be a central angle here, right in here, okay, with the radii. One radii, two radii creates this central angle, okay? Here's an equilateral triangle. Um, you can see that if I draw this and this, um, we know that that's going to be 120. And obviously, since we have congruent sides because they're both radii, this would be 30 and 30. Uh, we know that's 120, we know that's 60, and so forth, okay? So uh, in order to figure out the formula or to figure out what the central angle is for a regular polygon, you would just take 360 and divide it by the number of sides, which also corresponds to the number of central angles. Notice five sides, one, two, three, four, five central angles. Three sides, one, two, three central angles, okay? Interior angles. Okay, so interior angles in a polygon are basically not the exterior ones, but just the interior. So it would be this angle, plus that angle, that angle, that angle, and that angle. Okay. Interior angles are congruent in a regular polygon. Um, and so n minus 2 times 180 divided by n will get you the measure of the angle. Okay. So Basically, the entire number of the sum of the measures of the angles, which is the n minus 2 times 180, divided by the number of them, gets you the measure of the interior angle. Okay. Interior angles obviously would be congruent. Again, go back to your equilateral triangle, 60, 60, 60. Then exterior angles are congruent. So um, 360 divided by n will also get you the measure of each central angle. So in other words, 360 divided by n gets you the central angle, and it also tells you what the measure is of the exterior angle. Those are equal to each other. Or, since interior and exterior angles are supplementary, 180 minus 360 over n will also you get you the measure of one interior angle. Okay. All right, another formula. The area of a regular polygon, you can always figure that out by multiplying one half the apothem times the perimeter. One half of the apothem times the perimeter. Okay. All right, so here's some sample problems. And again, I want you to try and do these on your own if you can, um, and then you know pause the video, and then you can come back and um, check and see how you did. Okay, so first thing, find the measure of the central angle, interior angle, and exterior angle of a regular hexagon. And I've done that, I believe, on the left, and then a pentagon on the right. Okay, and I've given you a little hint here. Again, always a good idea to write out the formula that you're going to plug into. It shows your teacher you know what you're doing and helps you stay organized. So, oh, I don't, I don't think I mentioned that. This is called, this is a theta, a lowercase theta. It's a Greek letter. And that's the symbol we use for central angle. So central angle is 360 divided by n. Okay. So for the hexagon, and again, pause the video and try it yourself. Okay, I'm back. It would be 360 divided by 6, which equals 60. So that would be what the central angle is. Well, since we know central angles and exterior angles are congruent, 
The exterior angle would also be that. And then what would the interior angle be? Well, they're supplementary, so it would be 120. Okay, for Pentagon, divide by five, and we end up getting 72, which would be the central angle and exterior angle, and obviously, um, I don't know why I have 360 minus 72 there. It should be 180 minus 72. So we can change that. Actually, let's just write over that. So this should be 180. Okay. Um, great. How many sides does a regular polygon have if the exterior angle measures 72? If it measures 30, I'll do the 72 one over here. But try it yourself. So in this case, we know what theta is. We don't know what n is. That's what we're trying to solve for. So basically, you would set it up 360 over n equals 72. And if you do the math, I mean 72n equals 360, divide by 72, and you end up getting 5. So it is a pentagon. And if the extra angle measures 30, well, 30n equals 360, and n would equal 12. So it's a dodecagon. Okay. And square, a square inscribed in a circle of radius 8. Uh, find the apothem and the side of the square. So give that one a shot. Draw a diagram. Think about what formula you're going to use. Okay, so here's the diagram. Radius is 8, and we need to find the apothem, which is this, and the side of the square. Okay. Well, we know if, if I kind of blow up one of these triangles right here, make it bigger and easier to see, this would be 8. I know that this will be 90 degrees, um, and Therefore, these two angles are 45. How do we know that? Because what's the central angle here in a square? It's going to be 90, right? And we know that this is an um, angle bisector, right? So 45 there. This one's 45. Okay. Well, if that means that's 8. Then to get the legs here, don't we just divide by root 2? So we'd have 8 over root 2 or 8 root 2 over 2, which reduces to 4 root 2. So there's the math on that. So the apothem is 4 root 2, and the side is obviously 4 root 2 doubled to get the whole side as 8 root 2. Okay. Find the measure of, find the area, excuse me, of a regular hexagon of side 12. Okay, so again, you want to think about what formula you're going to use. Well, we know that the area, this is a very ugly and not drawn well hexagon, um, is equal to one half the apothem times the perimeter. Okay, so there's kind of your figure. We know the side's 12. Well, doesn't that mean the perimeter is just 12 times 6, which is 72? It is. So now we need to figure out the... Um, Apothem, and then we're ready to go. Well, if the side is 12, we know that this is going to bisect the side, so this is 6. There's a 90 degrees there. The central angle in a hexagon is, what, 360 divided by 6, which is 60, which means that half of it's going to be 30. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the side opposite the 30 is 6, which means our apothem is going to be 6 root 3 because it is opposite the 60. And then all we have to do is plug in. So 1 half 6 root 3 times 72. And that ends up becoming 216 root 3. Okay. Um, last problem. Find the measure of each angle of a regular octagon. All right, so different ways that we can go about doing this. See if you can figure out one or maybe both. Hint is to look at all those formulas we have 
um, at the bottom of the, I think, the previous page. Okay, so we know n is 8. Uh, we know we can get the central angle, which also is equal to the exterior angle by just dividing by 8. So 360 divided by 8 is what the central angle is. That obviously comes out to be 45, which means that the exterior angle is 45. To get the interior, it's 135. Okay, Or there's a second way we could have done this. We know that n minus 2 times 180 divided by n will tell us the measure of the interior angle. So if you plug in 8 for that, uh, down here, and then 8 minus 2 would be 6. We can reduce, let me get this up off of here. I eh, can't really see it very well, can we? Sorry, guys. Um, but anyway, we can cancel the 6 and the 8, the 3 and 2, and then the 2, and what did I do here? Oh, it looks like maybe I canceled the 8 and the 180 first to 2 and 45. This 4 goes into both of them and then reduce that down. So anyway, we get 135. Okay, so that does it for that. Um, hope this was helpful, and go ahead and go try your homework. Yay! I will see you in class.